To those who weren't lucky enough to witness it, the Super Bowl was a fantastic event all across the board when the Miami Donkeys challenged the Washington Canucks at the Citrus Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. I can tell you with certainty, I was at the edge of my seat when I saw how the bases were loaded. The tension was high, and you could feel the anxiety the goalie felt as Steve Tebow nailed a perfect strike, achieving a hole-in-one and grabbing the golden snitch in the process, ending the event as the victor. My, 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 I am still shaking by it. That said, I'm McConaughey, here alongside Scott Moore for the Mishmash podcast here on Mishmashers.com. And Scott, what did you think about the Super Bowl? I want to know who Steve Tebow is. He's, he is the guy that led the Washington, no, the Miami Donkeys to victory at the Super Bowl. Huh. Is he really good at football then? He is all right. There's a lot of controversy with him, I guess, during the middle of matches. It's become quite controversial. He'll take a knee right in the middle of it. Like, he'll just go to his knee, and then people will tackle him and, like, beat the crap out of him. It's, in the middle of the game? Yeah, in the middle of the game. Not the national anthem, but in no, the middle no, of the game. No, in the middle game. of the game. That it's, is a protest. Yeah, it, he is dedicated. Wow. Well, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the New England Patriots and also um, their opponent, which is now the Super Bowl champion, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. I don't even think there's a team Miami Dolphins. That's or donkeys. That's dolphins. <laughs> it's the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I, I uh, originally wrote it Miami Dolphins, but I'm like, wait a minute, that might actually be a real team. So <laughs> I changed it. Thing. So no, so I actually watched the game, and it was actually pretty riveting. I don't know if we have a lot of uh, mishmashers out there who are sports fans or fanatics, but it was actually an amazing game. We went into the game. Um, thinking that the New England Patriots were going to just kind of blow it out of the water, that there wasn't going to be any competition. I was guessing that it was going to be a low-scoring affair for Philadelphia, a very high-scoring affair for New England, which it turned out that it was a very high-scoring affair for New England. But Philadelphia was able to keep pace and also exceed that by scoring 41 points. Um, It was actually a very historic Super Bowl with uh, both teams scoring the highest amount of points in the Super Bowl. The New England Patriots scored the highest amount of a losing team ever in the Super Bowl, and both teams accumulated the most yards ever in the Super Bowl. So there was plenty of offense. I think even a novice at football, somebody who doesn't watch it, quote-unquote casual fan, would have been entertained by the by the game. What about the big O spectacle? So whatever I found that was really odd about the Super Bowl this year wasn't so much so that it just it felt a little down because we had the likes of Nick Foles, who's the backup quarterback for Carson Wentz. Who yeah, right. Actually, I was on the fence about that myself. Carson Wentz actually went down in midseason with an ACL injury. So we had uh, Nick Foles, who was his backup, take over. He kind of uh, just had some horrible games there at the tail end of the season, came into the playoffs, blew the competition out of the water in uh, Minnesota, and then kind of, you know, had a wishy-washy game in Atlanta. But, you know, going into this game, everybody thought Tom Brady is going to blow him out of the water. Again, Philadelphia is your Super Bowl champions, which I'm thankful for because I hate the New England Patriots. I hate Tom Brady. Whenever I see Tom Brady's sad face, I yelled so many explicatives at the TV, and I'm not going to say them all here because it probably just wouldn't be good for our audience to hear. But what about the spectacle of the show? Because usually I feel like there's a huge spectacle around the commercials and about the atmosphere and the and the uh, halftime show and things like that. I don't know much about football itself, and one thing in particular that stood out to me was the announcement of the Cloverfield Paradox, which is the third installment in the Cloverfield franchise. And it was basically a trailer for it premiered at the Super Bowl, or at least I believe it did, and... The film is already on Netflix. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I'm not hearing the best of things about it. Ten Cloverfield Lane received high reviews, and I really, really enjoyed it. But apparently, uh, this new film, the Paradox film, is not doing well at all. So those were my real things. I don't know whether or not they had the Han Solo trailer at the Super Bowl, or did they, they just... I Because I know they did uh, the morning show, like a morning website. It was just a small clip. It wasn't... So the actual trailer that came out today for the Han Solo solo film... Um, was actually about a minute and 29 seconds. The one that they played during the Super Bowl was maybe about 10 to 15 seconds. It wasn't very long. 
It was kind of an introduction. But on the whole spectacle of this uh, Super Bowl felt really down to me. Like, I watched a bunch of the commercials, and I wasn't really enthralled with them. Like, on, on previous years, I watched, and I laughed, and I had a good time. I don't really feel like there was a standout commercial, really. And some of those commercials that did stand out stood out for weird reasons, like the Dodge uh, commercial with MLK's speech overlay in the top of it. They're talking about how they're wanting to sell a car and they have MLK's speech. He didn't even like commercialism, so he hated capitalism, he hated commercials, he said that, you know, he hated that people were judged by what they wore, what they drove, how they lived, and things like that. So it was really weird to have that same speech that he denounced all of that in overlaying a car commercial. It was really odd. And then there was the commercial with the Budweiser, where while Budweiser probably does do a lot of humanitarian things where uh, we really really should thank them for it, it was really odd for them to kind of like pat themselves on the back. Like, they're showing their like beer making process, and all of a sudden they start putting all these other fixings on there, and then they're like, oh, by the way, we also send water to like Flint, and to Texas, and to Puerto Rico, and to California. Okay, that's awesome that you did that, but like, why are you like promoting it during There's the no school? reason to do good things unless you're going to get credit for it. Do you it? realize how much <laughs> those commercials are? So for like 30 seconds, you are paying like $5 million. I don't know, maybe it's just, it's probably just good publicity. It's not only, it may not not be advertising your product itself but there's a lot of people now seeing that you're doing good right and i don't know it kind of makes me feel like you're just overzealously patting yourself on the back it's like well, hey, like i said no reason to do, do good things unless you can get credit for it. it's like giving a uh you know a homeless man a quarter and then advertising it with a five dollar billboard it's like <laughs> they took a picture of you handing a quarter to a homeless man and then you put it in Times Square. It, it doesn't make any sense. You spit more on the billboard, you could have probably bought an entire meal from the homeless guy. So the entire spectacle of it, I think, was down. The ratings have been down all year for the NFL. I think they were down something like 10%, where they're projecting that the Super Bowl was down 3% from last year, which I think was because of the teams that were in it. Everybody expected the Eagles to get blown out. Everybody expected for the Patriots to win. The only people in the world that want to see the Patriots win are in New England. And in Massachusetts, nobody else in the world wants to see that. I'm going to be happy when they implode during the offseason. I hope that Bill Belichick retires. I hope Gronkowski retires. I hope Tom Brady gets in a non-lethal accident where maybe he breaks, you know, an ankle and can't come back. <laughs> I will be ecstatic if all that happens and we don't have to hear about the Patriots for the next 12 years. So that's my thoughts on what we would call this year's Super Bowl. Yeah, I was really surprised when the Ford vehicles, like I, you said something about the uh, commercials. I was really surprised when they started driving out in the field, like running everybody else over like it was Grand Theft Auto. That blew my mind. That didn't happen. Oh, yeah, you were watching a different Super Bowl than I maybe, was. but I'm pretty sure... That that did not occur. So all in all, would you say thumbs up or thumbs down to the Super Bowl? For the Super Bowl, was it was a great Super Bowl, even though it was part of the Patriots, and I didn't know if they were going to be able to come back and win. I think it was a riveting Super Bowl. I think even the most casual of fans would have been entertained. There wasn't a lot of defense. There was a lot of offense. I give it a thumbs up. Well, I myself, like I said, not a big fan of football. If you enjoyed it, then, then feel free to leave a comment in our comment section below letting us know what you thought about the Super Bowl.